Hello, this presentation is titled How to Be a Script Kitty. So, there's four steps to being a script kitty. Uh, first of all, if you want to hack into a machine by using existing exploits that other people have already written, uh, the first step is identify all the components on the stack. Uh, the second step is identify the versions or vendors for each component. Third, research a version-specific vulnerability. And then, lastly, execute the vulnerability. So, let's have a look at the first part. So what is a stack? This is an example stack. At the bottom you have your operating system. Then you have your libraries uh, or code that people have written to run applications but the underlying framework that allows you to run an application then you have um, say a runtime environment or something that will be here and then lastly you have each the application everything underneath it is a dependency so um, let's have a look at um, making a simple uh, uh, web request to the website on the Iranian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So let's have a look. Um, in your request data, you just say get and then www.mfa.gov.ir and in the response they send you um, Microsoft IIS 7.5 is the server they're using and it has this x powered by field that says ASP.NET. So we know the operating system now, the web server, and the runtime environment. The simple get request. All you have to do is open your debugging console in your browser and they send it to you. So let's try a, a noisier way of finding information, a more aggressive way. So what you do is you get a scanner, and you point a scanner at the website, and this will uh, send a ping to, to the machine uh, testing the different ports. So um, in this case port 25 is closed, port 80 is open which is for web services, uh, 135, 139, 445 those are closed. Now um, it also does operating system detection and uh, it's guessed that it's, they're using IBM AIX uh, 5 something, there's a 90% chance. Uh, which is interesting because um, there is an embargo against Iran for selling products, uh, yet they have products made by US companies, Microsoft and IBM. Um, so let's, um, let's take a look at what we found out. We discovered this layer here, which is the operating system. We discovered this here, the runtime environment. And we discovered the web server, which would be um, up here, I think. Uh, the web application for their website is a custom one, so there's no point in looking for vulnerabilities for that. So, what types of vulnerabilities are there? There's zero days, and there's a responsible disclosure. So a zero day is where a black hat uh, group finds a vulnerability, and they, they don't release it publicly. What they do is they, they might sell it or use, to take, use it to take advantage of um, systems that haven't secured their, their servers, you know. And they could get root access without any um, passwords or just, just taking control of the machine using a, a vulnerability such as a buffer overflow or uh, SEH uh, bypass or something like that. So the responsible disclosure here you have a center of vulnerabilities uh, and exposures uh, that's one database that uh, people report vulnerabilities to and then they give the vendor three months notice before they actually disclose it to the public. Um, three, two or three, four, depends I think. In this case uh, this one here is the National Vulnerabilities Database uh, 
you can disclose vulnerabilities to them responsibly as well. Um, so let's have a look at uh, two implementations of these databases. One is Leap Day, which is a zero-day database for black hat hackers, you know. And uh, you can go on there and find the latest exploits. And then you have official responsible disclosure databases, such as CVE Details. So let's, let's have a look at CVE Details, their website. So you can see here that you can browse by vendor, and then you can drill down into each vendor and browse by product. So let's, let's go into the Microsoft vendor and the product IIS, which is their web server. So if we click into IIS 7.5, you can see that there's a um, vulnerability listed here with a uh, number of available exploits listed as well. Uh, the severity of each exploit, uh, what sort of, um, what sort of, uh, things you can do using the exploits, such as remote code execution or denial of service. Let's um, click into the top one there, and you can see that um, the exploit here is uh, exploitdb.com, and if we click into this, here's the Python code for running it. So you just download this Python code, and execute it, and point it at your victim running that version of the software, IAS 7.5. and um, this will allow you to get root access to the machine without understanding how the exploit works. So what have we achieved? Remote code execution, denial of service, and getting out of the application layer into the kernel layer. It depends on the exploit. So um, all you have to do is keep your software up to date, patch it. And put, uh, some people have thousands of servers and they don't have time to manage them all and sometimes something gets forgotten and then that's how, that's how the attackers get in. It doesn't, doesn't take much technical know-how because all you have to do is click and run the exploit. So um, now let's have a look at a virtual machine we have over here. So this is um, Windows XP uh, release to manufacturer edition, the first edition. And it's version 2002, professional. So it comes with all the extra goodies. Um, so basically how we set this up is we have our services here. And we've turned everything on except for automatic updates, which we've disabled. So everything runs on startup and it's never going to be patched because we have automatic updates turned off. So, now let's, let's take a look at uh, a network scanner called Nmap, or a, a GUI front-end called Zenmap. Uh, here it is. So, um, we're pointing it at our machine, and we're going to do a simple ping scan, just to see if, if it's uh, accessible over the network. So, <coughs> There you go, it's responding. Now let's do um, a port scan with operating system detection and we'll crank it up to max speed. So, sim scan, uh, operating system detection, and um, max speed. Okay, that's where it is. So it's scanning away there. And it's finished now. So you can see these are the ports that are open. On that uh, RPC remote procedure calls, uh, network file system, uh, UPnP plug and play. Uh, okay, so um, now that we, we know we have operating system detection here telling us that it's Microsoft Windows XP, probably, it doesn't know for sure, but um, it's doing a best guess. And um, now that we've narrowed down uh, what, we're, what types of vulnerabilities we're looking for, you can go to a vulnerability scanner called Nessus. So I like Nessus because it integrates um, all the. Um, let me just log in here. Localhost thing that we've installed on our machine. I like it because it integrates um, other scanners such as Metaploit, um, OpenPass, and other exploit databases all into 
one scanner. Um, so to, uh, to start off, we create a policy, and in our policies, we'll just use an existing one that we've made earlier, and we go to the plugin section. Each, this, these are the exploits, so you can drill down into this, and it'll give you all the different exploits. So we're not going to do all of them because, like AIX, that's IBM stuff. CGI abuses. There's no web server installed on it. Cisco, and it's not a Cisco device. Debian, um, FreeBSD. These are just going to slow down our scan, and they're not going to give us any useful results. So what we're going to do is we're going to select backdoors, a DNS databases, FTP, a gain a remote shell peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, remote procedure calls, and all the Windows stuff at the bottom. So we press update and that will save our um, our policy. And we'll call it um, Windows XP RTM release to manufacturer 1. Then we'll go to the scans and we'll create a scan using that policy. So um, let's just call it uh, scan 1234. And we'll select our policy here, so we'll release my actual one. We'll type in our IP address, and um, I'm going to do it on this save plus 12.75. Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll run this scan, and it's ticking away there. And um, what this will do is it will execute all the payloads in the policies that we've selected, and it will try and determine if the machine is patched or not without having root access to the machine. Um, and this, this is quite aggressive, and it could end up breaking the machine if it is vulnerable, but uh, they do their best to, um, to be able to determine without root access. So, uh, generally, an attacker would do this, um, the machine might crash, and they might come back a week later when it's been rebooted and uh, then um, they can reuse the exploit with the proper parameters and it won't crash and they'll get root access and then they can start doing internal network scans and all this stuff. So um, if we click into this we can see that so far we've detected 12 critical vulnerabilities, uh, 15 now and 13 high Two medium and twenty-one informational, so just disclosure stuff that shouldn't be available. Let's let's look at the critical stuff. You can see our vulnerabilities here. And there's one here that says Microsoft RPC interface buffer overrun. Now we remember setting RPC in the services while well, I do. So we'll click into this one and this is critical vulnerability. And what it says is it's uh, exploitable with Meta Exploit. It's called Microsoft RPC DCOM Interface Overflow. And um, 2003, um, year 2003, on the 7th month. So uh, let's launch Meta Exploit now. Now, um, is launched, so let's type search. Oops. And we'll um, search for 2003-03, which is um, hmm. Microsoft were aware of it on the third. Hmm. Oh, CVE two thousand and three zero three five two. So let's look for that one. And Metasploit uh, will search its database on our behalf.
So let's have a look at our cheat sheet here. Um, you launch MSF console, you do a search, and then to use an exploit, you type use and then the name of the file. So um, in our case, we have three results, and the first one is normal, the last one is good, and the middle one is great, apparently. It's been ranked. So uh, this, the middle one is the Microsoft RPC DCOM interface, so that's the one we want. So we're going to copy the name of this file, type use, and then paste it in there. Um, so we're not using that exploit. Let's type um, from our cheat sheet here, show options, we'll display the parameters for that file. So show options. And we can see that there's a parameter called remote host, our host. That's the, that's the victim's IP address. We so take set space our host space near the IP address from earlier. Paste that in. And if you type show options again, you can see that that is set. So now, if we type the word exploit, it will launch the exploit with the current parameters. Don't forget to um, disable your firewall. So we've successfully exploited the um, the uh, exploit or the machine. And um, what it's done is it's created a buffer overflow which has launched a system call with the parameters with uh, parameters to the system call and the system call is to download a file of our IP address so we, we're not launching a web server and it has to be able to access our web server so it downloads this malicious file and executes it so we have to make sure that our, our um, firewall is turned off so we've done this command service IP, IP tables stop that turns off our Linux firewall. Um, and if for some reason the interpreter is after dying, uh, it's not normal, but um, maybe it will allow us to relaunch it. No. Uh, but once you're in the interpreter there, you're able to um, execute commands like ls or uh, get proofs to get additional privileges. And um, there's some. Uh, my interpreter uh, cheat cheat stuff here. You can execute cmd.exe. You can reboot the system. You can read and write files. You can, you can do anything a system administrator can do. So, um, we've successfully taken you from uh, what is an exploit, how to find them, and what exploits to choose, then how to use them. So, um, that is how to be script kitty. Thanks very much.